Welcome back to Machete Boys Barbecue, and today we're visiting with Leah and Dave from Fertile Acreage Farm to find out what makes their beer-fed pork different. How'd you guys get involved in the pig business? We started as a bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. and so we got five pigs off Craigslist to uh, raise for breakfast at the bed and breakfast. This yeah. is kind of how we started. And then once we had kids, kind of the bed and breakfast had to stop, but we kind of fell in love with pigs. You bought your first pigs from Craigslist. Were those all just the hodgepodge of whatever you could find? The first five were red Duroc pigs. Yeah. And then we would find another batch out of Berkshire. And then we'd find another batch. And then over the course of several years, we've been doing this now for 10 years. Over the course of several years, we'll, we'll pick and choose a couple out of each to keep as sows. Okay. And then we'll have our kind of mainstay boar, which currently we have a Berkshire boar before we had a Duroc Hampshire boar. And so, uh, and then that boar will, you know, Sire a, bunch Sire a whole bunch of different other breed, yeah. breeds of sows, and so that's how we get our mix. I think there's a lot of farmers that do that, which because it's pretty, it's how you get a hardy breed that can handle the winters and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. I think what makes our what our, makes our pigs the most unique is how we feed them, how we raise them, um, more so than the breed that we that we raise. Um, the brewer's grain that we get from Brow Brothers, they grow a little bit slower on it. So like uh, you know, if you're just feeding them corn, uh, soy feed, you know they'll they'll get to 300 pounds in about you know five six months or so mm -hmm. but with the brewer's grain uh the brewer's grain loses some of its protein content when it gets soaked mm -hmm. you know at the brewery and so there's some that protein's missing so we do we do some local corn and soy on top of it just to kind of fill those gaps but because the bulk of their diet is brewer's grain uh, they're they're raising about seven to eight months uh, to get to 300 pounds and so then you get a little thicker marbling um, so you get a little more flavor mm -hmm. and uh I think it comes out in the final product. That's awesome. So where did the beer fed, where the beer group fed grain, where did that come in from? Is that like some research that you were doing to like figure that out? Or are you just like- It's totally just a shot in the dark. I, yeah. I, feed costs were so high because we were yeah. just buying our corn and soy feed. Yeah. And it's, it's expensive to, to buy that. So it's like, man, where can we cut costs? And I think we were just brainstorming like, well, there's, you know, we've heard of this, you know, brewer's grain stuff that's just left over from breweries. And we were like, well, we know we have a brewery right down in Marshall. It's a pretty big brewery. And yeah. Because you know, Brawl Brothers has been around for a long time and they're awesome. Uh, and so, yeah, so we just reached out to them, cold call, and they said we'd put you on our list. And uh, sure enough, eight to nine months later, they gave us a call and said, hey, if you still want it, you yeah. can have the brewer's grain as much as you want. So, kind of went from there. That's awesome. So, it's actually, it's, it's cool because it's reusing a byproduct of something else. Does the pork taste like beer? Or does it like pick up any of those notes of, of beer that, you, that you've noticed? Because I have a ham at home that I'm actually going to cook. So, you guys stick around and check that out after this video. What should I expect or what should someone expect if they're, they're picking up Fertile Acres Farm? Our pork? chefs have told us that it, the marbling is so rich that it just is like kind of one of the best cuts that they've ever, best pork that they've pork ever had before. before. I don't know if it necessarily tastes yeah. like beer, but I mean, yeah. I think I think you can definitely taste a different flavor in it, whether that's because of the you know, the brewer's grain itself or because of the marble or whatever it is. I guess the way I describe it is it's, it's like a richer flavor. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. But, so, I mean, uh, that, that makes sense, right? Because it has a higher marbling, which means more fat content. Yeah. Yeah. Usually yeah. fat equals flavor. So yeah. it's just, so I'm going to be expecting like the juiciest, most decadent piece of pork I have. I have that later today. What does it take to make sure that the pigs survive a potentially brutal winter, which obviously this year has been null point because there's no snow. It's been yeah. So that's why we do the mixed heritage breed because mm -hmm. we know that they're hardier in the winter. Um, they also, uh, you saw when you went on the tour, the deep winter bedding. So yeah. we really try to layer, um, they go deep down in it. Um, they lay near each other. Um, they always have a place to go. So yes, they have pastures and mud, but they also have a inside to go yeah, to. So. Yeah, wind yeah. Cold, so. we've done wind blocks, yep. creative wind ways. Blocks. Um, I do some alfalfa as yep. well. So we have some alfalfa bales that I yeah. do. But it's extra rough, it's from yeah. the chew on, get some extra calories in the yeah. winter when it's cold. When there's tons of snow, is that challenging to keep them in their pasture? Do you ever find pigs out on your lake frozen, like wandering around out there and you gotta go get them? <laughs> They're not, they never found them in the lake, but we've they do. We've made trails but, for them to get out of the barn. Yes, yeah, so we've had to cut so because it'll drift so badly between yeah. the barn and where we feed them that I'll have to go out there and shovel. And so it'll be taller than the pigs, just an alley yeah. that oh. they'll walk through. Oh. Uh, it's, it's pretty insane, yeah. the amount of snow. And yeah, then we do have to close down some of our pastures at that point because the drifts will be over the fences and yeah. they could just easily walk right out if they wanted to. And yeah. so um, we have to kind of keep it a little more contained with the bits of that snow. Thankfully this year without snow, we can let them run. Run wild, run wild a lot more. Between so. pens, breaking down fences. Yeah, break down fences, <laughs> pushing things over. Yeah. yeah. 
do what pigs do. You were raised here, right? Yeah. And did you guys have pigs here when you guys when you were when I was in up here? elementary school? We had yeah. pigs. Um, all these barns had pigs in them, and then um, we kind of. That was when I was young in elementary, and then as I got older, we transitioned into um, we would get all the bull calves from my uncle's dairy up by Wilmer. Okay. And so then we started raising bottle calves um, up until about 400 pounds, and then we sell them to a neighbor. And so we'd have anywhere from 20 to 40 cow cows. I uh, did that all the way through high school, and then when I left for college, kind of sold off all the cows, and then, uh, the barn sat empty until we came back and started raising pigs at home. So now we're kind of getting them back to what they originally meant for, which was raising pigs. So. Gotcha. And you grew up a farm too, right? No. No? No. no. I grew up in town. Yeah. <laughs> um, nope, I did not grow up on a farm. I had never experienced a farm. I had never lived on a farm. I had never driven on a gravel road. Um, I didn't know what a septic system was. I mean, we could just keep going. <laughs> I never lived in the country. Uh uh nope. Do you love it? I do, yeah, yeah. It's a completely different lifestyle, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, yep. it kind of when we were walking around earlier, you were saying it's just like how much work the farm is, but it's absolutely labor of love, which I it think is, is yeah. which is awesome too. Yeah, right? yep. So you, you guys are a family of five, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Do they get to help a lot out on the farm and a lot of chores? And They do. They do. Yeah. yeah, our oldest daughter, I mean, it helps pretty consistently with yeah. chores um, on a daily basis. And then all three, when it's time to kind of clean barns, things like that, you know, and wheelbarrow out the the manure and stuff like that, yeah. they'll all jump in and grab a shovel and help out, so. That's cool. So the chore list here probably looks a lot different than it does at my house. You know, feed the pigs yeah. or uh, fill the corn wheel barrel yeah. or scoop brewer's grain or spread straw. You yeah. know, so there's some of those chores. Yeah, our youngest, she can even lift up the wheel barrel. Yeah, yeah. She'll, she likes oh, pushing wow. the wheel barrel around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. carry pretty... buckets of water. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty sweet. common. Too. Do you guys have favorite chores that you like to do? That's my things. favorite chore? I like making it look nice. Yeah. I like I like looking at the farm yeah. from a perspective that isn't from the country, but more from like how someone who's never been on a farm before will see it. Yeah. Yeah. To try to make it look are. nice. Yeah. To people who are visiting. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, driving in here, it looks great. And I think I was telling you guys this when we were walking around outside a little bit, like my perception of what a farm looks like in my head um, is probably different. And I think a lot of people in America is different. Mm -hmm. They think of like, oh, cute little put together barns and like cute little animals. And it, that's not like a, an ideal working farm, right? It is dirty. There's mud, there's trees that fall down. But I mean, walking around here today, I felt like, you know, this is this is great. Mm -hmm. this is, you guys are doing an awesome job here. It seems like you guys have a really good relationship with the pigs. And they all seem very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which is cool. yeah, they are. I, I think, I mean, we definitely do our best to treat them with respect. I mean, because they're, yeah. you know, they're, their kind of whole purpose of their life is to serve, really. And so yeah. I feel like I should try to serve them while they're, <laughs> while they're here and make sure that their life yeah. is as comfortable as possible. So, what are your favorite pork dishes? So when our high-end cuts sell out, we mm -hmm. have what's left for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've learned to make uh, a really good ramen with it. So it makes a really nice broth. Um, and then we put that in our ramen. Our kids like that a lot. We work with our ribs all the time. So our country ribs are something we're always cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and really, if we're just putting it in the oven, low and slow, um, we just love anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then quick meals, we'll yeah. put a coil sausage and quick just, grill it up or something. Yeah. yeah. That's a good quick meal. For yeah, place. that was the one at the state fair that people said it was the best thing they ate all day. So that was cool to hear. Yeah. Is it going back to the state fair this we year? We hope so. Hope so. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, We'd love to be there. Yeah, we love partner, partnering with the meatery because when, you, when, you're, when we start getting into restaurants, you know, the restaurants want their specific cuts. And so like bacon's gone, shoulder rolls are gone, mm -hmm. ham's gone, um, bacon. canned bacon's gone uh, for the most part, you know, in terms of like large quantities. But then you have those other cuts that aren't selling to the restaurants that are start building up as you. And so what do you do with all those cuts? And so the meadery, you know, it, being able to put some of those cuts that aren't going to the restaurants, they're still really good cuts, but you know, just don't have a consistent seller for them, um, or buyer. Being able to put those in boxes and get those out. But just talk about some of the packages that people could order from the meadery that you guys are putting together. Um, so we do a Saturday morning breakfast box. Uh, one sold really well over the holidays and mm -hmm. continues to sell, so it has Three different types of links in it. Our regular links, our, our regular, maple links, yep. and our maple wild rice yep. links. I love yep. it. Uh, and then they also have patties. Um, well, there's uh, bacon ends of pieces in it. Canadian and then, bacon. Uh, ends Canadian ends. bacon ends of pieces as well in it, which is really nice for you know you just fry it up and, and mm -hmm. put it in a quiche or you can have it as all the other way. It's fine. 
And we also sub some things out for them too. So we'll put we'll do some ham steaks in there if they want it or breakfast patties. Breakfast patties yeah. you can sub in there as well. So there's some different substitutes here. So anything on demand, demand will do. Yeah, anything someone wants, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys must have an awesome butcher in this relationship. You guys just kind of give them a cut list and yep. get you guys whatever yep. you want. Totally. Yep. No, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally just text, I text the butcher like yeah. what we want for this group of pigs. So we do drop eight or nine pigs off and then I'll just say, you know, one pig, let's do pork steaks yeah. uh, with the shoulders and the other pigs make a whole bone in the shoulders or something like that. And they'll just do it. Oh, so, that's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, some other boxes from the meter that we have are uh, the coil sausage box. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's because that's such a big hit. Yeah. Everybody likes the coil sausage. There's just four coil sausages in the box. So our country uh, rib box. Country rib box is popular. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two racks of country ribs with a yeah. tender one. Do you guys do spare ribs as well? We do have. Yeah, we have a mixture. We have some uh, some St. Louis and then some some you know cut down spares as well. Yeah. So. So it's pretty much just like whatever people could dream of that might be a pork product, they should get in touch with you guys. Yep. Yep. And it could get shipped right to you. Yep. Yep. Which, is, which is absolutely awesome. Yep. Yep. And if we don't have it in our freezers now, we can always- we We'll go, have it in a month. Yeah, every month we go yep. to the butcher so I can order it and have it here in a month. So what cuts do you insist that people try first when they're when they're thinking about Fertile Acreage Farm? I think our coil sausage is amazing. Yep. I think our country ribs are amazing. I, we have roasts that um, we can get cut small, and mostly the time they're 15 pounds, 15 to 20 pound roasts for restaurants. But mm -hmm. I mean, anytime someone wants to smoke something or just cook it at home, it's pretty awesome. Um, I love our Italian sausage and our pork sausage. So just ground product. Um, we're always mixing our pork, our ground pork with burgers, no. always. So we always mix beef and pork to make a hamburger. That's like the farm. ultimate hack of the Yeah. Burger. I would be I would be remiss to not say I love our pork chops. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, um, they are good. I mean if the I the fat melts. Yeah, it literally melts in your yeah, mouth. Yeah. It's our favorite. I know we didn't I didn't bring that up when we asked our favorite meals, but yeah. like my like my birthday dinner that I want almost every year is pork chops in the grill. It's so yeah. much so what are your plans for growth? The farm is technically 480 acres. Mm -hmm. Half of it is in lakes, basically. Lakes so there's three grass. different lakes here in yeah. prairie grass. And then the other half is tillable acreage. Yeah. And so our long-term goal would to be making it, all of it um, farmed. And then we would do the cornstalk bales here. And so it would yeah. just keep rotating to be back on the Are there any restaurants that are in Twin Cities or in the Minnesota area that are currently using your the product. Yeah, so for one for sure is Brawl Brothers uh, in Marshall. So if you're in the southwest Minnesota area, you can try our product out there. Um, Cubano, they have pulled pork on a variety of things there. Blue Nose Gopher, Tap mm -hmm. here in Grand Falls also. Yep. Um, in the summer, Goat Ridge. Goat Ridge Brewery in New London, uh, they have our brats on their menu. So mm -hmm. they'll have a lot of smoked brats from us there. The land will be opening in, in New London. New London and we'll be, we'll be in that working restaurant. with them when they open. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we've delivered whole hogs to them for like weddings and different things. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and then uh, and then we go to the cities. If you're in the metro area, Mont Petit Cherie in Stillwater, uh, downtown Stillwater. Um, they buy a lot of our product there. They're as well. a breakfast and lunch joint. Yeah. Yep. Uh, really great bakery. We have some regular customers actually from yep. the metro area who will just like message us, be like, "Hey, we're running low on pork. You know, when are you heading up to the cities again?" And we'll just let them know. Yeah, I know we'll be up there in a couple weekends, and we'll be in Stillwater around this time. You can meet us in the parking lot yeah. and we'll bring whatever you want there. So if you're ever interested in that, yep. you just shoot us a message on Facebook. So you guys want to be everybody's pork dealer. So that's something we're always working on. And that's a wrap from here at Fertile Acreage Farms. I want to thank Dave and Leah for taking the time to show me around and explain all about their unique brand of pork. I've dropped a link to their store in the description. Remember that good food starts with quality ingredients and hitting that subscribe button. You don't want to miss the holiday ham recipe coming up next.